Why is young adult fiction or fiction for teens? It's normally aged about 12 to 13 to about 18, although I know a lot of uh, adults that read it too, like me. Um, it, I, think, I don't think it differs all that much except for the characters are younger and some of the stories tend to skew towards that younger audience. Um, but I think, you know, the drama is just the same as an adult book, the mysteries are the same, and which is why a lot of adults are reading young adult is because they're appealing to the same, same kind of stories that they find in their own fiction. There's a difference in the humor, in the voice, and the way the character sees the world. Um, f for me specifically, I think my teenage characters, they tend to place blame outside of themselves more than internally. Um, they think the whole world's out to get them, everything's very dramatic, relationships are very new and strong, and uh, feelings are very fresh and raw. And so I like to take that into account when I write the teen voice, which I think is a little different than if you're writing an adult who has a little bit more life experience and they can pull from that and say, okay, well, I've done this before and I know how this turns out, as opposed to a teen who's kind of experiencing everything for the first time. YA is a very specific voice and you either have it or you don't have it. Um, I specifically think that I write for young adult well because I'm still a 15 year old at heart and I'm so uh, my writing just kind of tends to come out naturally sounding like a teenager. It's a very crowded market right now and it's very hard to break in. Um, what I like to do for mine is I, I like to do different things to make my books come to life because I think a lot of young teens are reluctant readers. I was a reluctant reader. So I create um, book trailers that look like movie trailers, very cinematic, and so it kind of makes the story come to life. Uh, for one of my books, I did a book soundtrack where I produced original songs based on scenes from the book. Um, I also do website, interactive websites that tie into my books. So anything that makes my books more than just text on a page is how I like to try to stand out. How do you write YA fiction? It is not, uh, don't fall into this trap. I know that we were all teenagers once, don't write about your experience as a teenager because teens today won't identify with it. Similar to the way that you didn't identify with it when your parents would tell you, well, when I was 16, you know, so don't fall into that trap. Here's what you do. Read, read, read YA fiction. First read it for enjoyment and then study the ones that you love and figure out why you love them and how you can emulate their style. Write every day even if it's only for five minutes. Get into that habit, lubricate that writer's brain, especially with that teen voice, and you'll find it just gets easier and easier over time. Don't worry too much about trends, because seriously, they change so fast, you won't be able to keep up with it. Teens, what, what teens like one day, they dislike and can't believe you're writing about it two weeks later. And unless you're planning on publishing a lot of eBooks only, you just, traditional publishing can't keep up with trends among teens. Um, you know, a piece of advice, start your own trend um, if, if you insist on doing something with trends. Get creative, find your own voice, but make sure that it's a teen voice. Where do you find teen voices? At the mall. Uh, listen to your kids if you have them. Listen to friends of your kids. Um, don't, I mean, you can ask teens questions, but they interact differently with adults than they do with themselves. So be careful about that. Tell stories that ignite a passion in you and believe in yourself as a writer and keep writing. The other thing it's really important to do is take classes. There, YA has become such a phenomenon that there are YA specific writers conferences and YA specific classes both online and in your community. So go to workshops and conferences, read books on craft and um, improve your craft of writing. Also join online and local critique groups and join SCBWI. It stands for the Society of uh, Children's Books Writers and Illustrators. Go to their scbwi.org website. You'll learn everything about it. Great resources there. Um, lots of lists of good books to read. Um, and um, start there. But that is how you write YA fiction. I think that young adults are interested in a lot of the same things as adults, but I also think that they're searching. Um, the books that I enjoyed as a young adult were always, they took topics that adults read about, but they distill them to kind of their essence. So for instance, I was just reading um, Divergent, the young adult, you know, sci-fi kind of fantasy book. And it really gets into basic issues. You know, what is friendship? What is courage? Um, these very fundamental issues that those are the kinds of things I'm interested in in the first place. I was a philosophy major. And, um, and I think that young adults are, are seeking those answers. They're looking for what are my values, you know, what is important in life, what, um, 
who am I? Those kinds of things. So I think young adult books um, are a step up from kids' books and that they can deal with these more abstract issues. But I think that, well, like Divergent, you need to have some aspect that hooks them, a, a thriller or some, some um, action. But um, I think not talking down to them, making, you know, realizing that um, these are people that are, the wheels are turning, they're thinking and searching and um, providing, providing some of those answers. When we write for young adults, uh, there's a tendency to talk down to them and not to speak uh, to them as equals. I think that's a terrible mistake. Uh, often young adults are as smarter or smarter than the adults that we're writing for. Uh, so it's not a question of that. Sometimes it's a question of knowledge and it's a question of orientation. In young adult writing, I think it's really important to keep the emotional life of the character in the forefront, the stakes. Uh, the problems, the difficulties this character is having emotionally. That that is it's always going to read so that you know that there's something difficult in the person's life, in drama, in drama, in YA. In, in adult fiction, that may not necessarily be the way that every chapter reads. And you can take time with description, you can take a little more leisurely time, maybe evolving a slow relationship in an adult novel that in a YA might happen a little faster. Uh, of course, there's language and sometimes in a young adult novel you'll, you'll use simpler words and not as compl complicated. Uh, you'll use simpler words and not as complicated uh, diction as you would uh, in an adult novel. But I think actually that they're very similar and um, I th there's just a question of tone and language really. I think um, one luxury that adult books have that young adult books don't have is the luxury of expanding and, and exploring a lot of descriptive detail of the environment and um, the, the characters in the world. I think with young adult you really have to um, focus in on the tension of the plot a lot more than adult books do. Um, it's very, uh, I don't think young adults have as much patience to, to go through and, and, and follow all of the descriptive detail that sometimes I see in adult fiction where they'll put conflict on hold and, and sort of let themselves explore the world a little bit more. I think with young adult you have to tie all of that in um, into the tension in the plot to keep the pace moving forward at a fast um, speed because I've, a lot of the young adult books that I've read they usually start off pretty fast paced right from the get go and I think it, it really trains you to, to focus on what's driving the plot more than, than anything else because you have to keep the reader's attention uh, throughout the entire thing. So There's not really a word count in particular that a young adult book has to be. I think it it should be as long or as short as it really needs to be to tell that specific story. Um, having said that, I think that young adult books have a little bit more leeway in terms of word count than adult books do. Um, I think the shortest that I've seen varies around 50,000 words and it can go all the way up to 120,000 words or so for the, the epic fantasy um, books. I mean, you look at Harry Potter and Twilight, they're, they're pretty hefty books. Um, so there's a little bit more leeway there, but I think it really depends on the story itself because young adult isn't really a genre, it's more a, a broad category that includes a whole bunch of genres. And depending on what genre you're writing, if you're writing um, maybe a contemporary YA, it would be shorter than if you're writing like an epic fantasy YA, which would require a, a larger word count. So um, it really just comes down to what um, the author thinks is right for their story. I think when we're working in the young adult genre, it's very important to maintain forward momentum in the story. And so we, as an author, we have this balance we have to strike between the action and adventure and keeping the story moving forward, but also trying to layer in enough description and setting to really give some richness to the story itself. And, and so it's been a challenge, but I think what I've found is that the most important thing you need to do is actually keep this forward momentum going in the story. The characters have to be moving story, moving forward in the story along an arc that will have to be resolved at the end of the book, even if it's in a series. But also, 
the content of the story has to keep moving forward too. So, and I think that's been a good discipline for me, writing an action adventure to sort of build that into those stories. And I've also found that if we can do that, uh, it's good for adults too. We have a lot of adults who want to read action adventure and, and the young adult um, genre is really well suited for that. So sometimes my books, when adults read them and I get reviews, adults will talk about them as beach reads, whereas the younger adults and the teenagers will look at it and say, no, there's actually, it's not just a beach read because I'm thinking. There's all sorts of interesting things that are happening to this character. I mean, I've got an ex-slave who's a woman in 1781 who's now captaining a pirate ship. And it's historical fiction. So it's not fantasy. So students, teenagers, and adults, if they're not familiar with that area and that period of history, are going to be challenged by the themes. And they will be challenged by the decisions that the characters make, all in a forward momentum of continuing with the action and continuing with the story. So I've found that the Pirate of Panta Bay series crosses genres in a really satisfying way for me. Authenticity is what teenagers want. They want to feel the voice of the character, not of the writer. They want real characters, usually someone who's a little bit older than they are. Teens like to read up, and they want the person to seem real. They want the person to have a conflict, or they want many conflicts actually in the story. They want to be able to relate to a person on an emotional level. First of all, agents are looking for something unusual, something different. Um, teens seem to be looking for something that deals with sci-fi, fantasy. Always they love anything that has a little perfect guy that they find. I also think um, strong female characters are finally finding a way into literature and they love that. The uh, mental health issues. Teens seem to sometimes love to cry. And so those stories that really hit the heart are perfect for teenagers at this time. Believe it or not, they love poetry. Uh, a lot of people think, oh, teens won't like poetry, but if you ask any teacher who brings real poetry into the classroom, you'll find out that the ch teenagers love poetry. Um, they especially like a novel in verse, like um, Ellen Hopkins' Crank and I hope, like the book I'm working on right now, uh, uh, novels in verse allow uh, writers to get to the emotion, to get to the personal. And I like to write my poems from the first person point of view because I think teens like that. They like to relate to the character. I love the enthusiasm of the young adult audience. I worked in teen magazines for a long time and I always felt really connected to their energy and I feel like they care a little bit more and are more invested in the stories than older readers might be and I just love that I just love that commitment to what they're reading. It matters to them a lot. I definitely think that you know, teenagers are people too, and as long as you're hitting on really true emotions of young adulthood, which are incredibly universal, even though every single teenager feels like it's the only time that anyone has ever felt this way, the truth is that everyone's felt that way. And if you can, as an author, you can hit on those, the correct emotions, you can make any kind of setting or scenarios work. So I think um, keeping in touch with settings and technology isn't as much of a concern as long as you're getting to the true heart of the story. And the rest is just window dressing. So I like, I, but on the other hand, I really, really enjoy all the things that teenagers love too. I think my internal brain is set at 17, so I'm happy to keep up with what they like because it's my job, but it's also a huge pleasure.